As the polls close on the closest battle for number 10 in a generation, Tom Bradby and Julie Etchingham bring you ITV's live coverage. It's election 2015. It is 5 to 10. In just a few minutes' time, the tightest election in living memory will draw to a close. But the arguments on what it means may have only just begun. On the first strike of 10, we will give you the results of our exit poll, an early indication of how we might have voted, and a curtain raiser, perhaps, for what might be a night of high political drama. Welcome to ITV's election 2015. One thing is for sure, tonight is likely to prove highly complex. So to help us make sense of it here in the studio, Colin Rallings from Plymouth University, ITV's election analyst for more than 20 years, and Jane Green from the British Election Study at the University of Manchester. And to try and work out who is actually winning, Julie Etchingham. Yes, Tom, that of course is the big question, but we'll be able to tell at a glance in the coming hours. This board will chart the story of the election, changing colour as we call the results, and we'll be brushing up on our maths too to work out if anyone might be able to form a majority in the new House of Commons. Traditionally on election night, we have been first with the results, and tonight again we are live across the country. We will, of course, be talking to our leading politicians, but we've also assembled some of the country's best analysts and commentators in our opinion room with Nina Hussain. I'm surrounded by some of the brightest political minds in the country who'll be discussing and debating the predictions and the results. We're also joined by the giants of social media, by Twitter and by Facebook, who'll be giving us their unique insights into what you're talking about through the night. We'll also look at how you voted and what that means for the next few days and the next few years. All those opinions and all the results will be on our website, itv.com forward slash news, along with instant analysis and reaction. In Westminster, our camera above the Houses of Parliament shows the time is inching ever closer to 10 o'clock. By law, we can't reveal our exit poll until we hear the first strike of that bell. In conjunction with Sky News and the BBC, We've spoken to thousands of voters in 141 polling locations in 133 different constituencies, and we asked them who they backed. Uh, Colin, absolutely no pressure, but you got the exit poll <laughs> on the nose last time. What do we... More complex, though, this time around. More complex. It's a nail-biting time for us, just so like it is for the voters waiting at home. <laughs> but we try as far as possible to go back to the same places as we went to in previous elections, which means we can look at the change. We're not sort of looking at virginal points where we don't know anything about their electoral history. And what the exit poll does, of course, is it tries to sort of give a probability of any one party winning any particular seat. So you shouldn't see this as a forecast of exactly who's going to win which seat, but just an overall or pattern to give us some kind of idea of how the night pan might pan out. And Jane, you've spoken to thousands of voters before the campaign, all the way through the campaign. What has changed and what is your perspective on the exit poll we're about to get? I think, Tom, one of the really big questions of the night for us is just how much this anti-Westminster trend that we've seen growing over recent years is going to impact on the result. It might do so in complex and really fascinating ways, so we're going to be obviously keeping a really close eye on just how that impacts in individual seats and the broader picture. Colin, it's hard to think, actually, of quite so much tension around an exit poll, isn't it? Because nothing has moved in this election whatsoever, absolutely at any point. Does that make it very, very difficult for you trying to make these judgments? Because as Jane says, it's very fragmented. Well, the, the, the polls haven't, of course, moved, but we have new changes in place. We, the SNP have been predicted all the way through the campaign to do well in Scotland. We have UKIP as a new factor in England especially. And as Jane was saying, that brings in a new period of multi-party politics and gives the voters many more different choices. And it'll be fascinating to see how they've actually used their votes. Just to be clear, the SNP, you weren't, wouldn't normally predict the SNP, but you've done so or you're planning to do so this Absolutely. time. Absolutely. We've gone to special trouble to more polling points in Scotland we've been looking at so that we can precisely give the forecast of how the SNP are likely to do. Well, let's just take a look at that very, very famous clock. Uh, it's fair to say that the political parties have uh, thrown absolutely everything uh, at that, uh, this election. You're just hearing the bell starting to ring there. On the first strike of 10, I can cut to the exit poll and tell you 
what we are predicting. But as I was saying, the political parties have put everything into this election campaign. They've fought very hard. They've moved up and down the country. But the polls have not shifted barely an iota all the way through. It is now 10 o'clock, and here's our exit poll. We're predicting the Tories on 316, Labour on 239, the Liberal Democrats on 10. If we're on the nose about that, an absolutely staggeringly bad night for the Liberal Democrat Party and for Nick Clegg. UKIP on 2, the Greens on 2, the SNP on 58. Again, if this is absolutely correct to the figure, an astonishing night in Scotland, a story all of its own, really, Plaid Cymru on four and the others on 19. Now, our exit poll numbers are going to sit there at the bottom of your screens all night. We will update the predict prediction once enough actual results are in. It is worth saying that the constitutional position is clear enough. David Cameron is still the Prime Minister and will remain so as long as he can win a confidence vote in the House of Commons. And we are clearly in hung Parliament ter territory. But the question is, on those numbers we've just seen, can he? Here's Julie with the Commons Calculator. Yes, it's our first visit to the Commons Calculator for some of those startling figures tonight. We can start having a look at how the mathematics might head up. Uh, we're looking, of course, at the exit poll figures that we've just seen. And let's see, you can see in the corner of our cube on the, that part of the screen, the magic number to get up to is 326. Now, on our exit poll predictions uh, and assessment, let's put in uh, the Conservative figure from our exit poll of 316 and you can see within that cube they are short by 10. Let's have a look then at how the figures then might up and this is simply a matter of the mathematics at this stage of course we've just got these figures in and we would go perhaps then to the Liberal Democrats and automatically you see that cube up to that number of 326. This is our exit poll assessment of course. Let's reset the cube and see how else the figures might add, add up for others. And, of course, the first people we turn to are Labour with that figure from our exit poll of 239. That leaves them short uh, by the figure that you can see there of 87. Let's have a look, then, at that astonishing figure that we're seeing from the exit poll uh, for the SNP, and that is one of 58. If there were a deal of any shape to be done, we could put that in to our figures there. We see we're then getting up to 297, but not the sort of numbers that we saw in our previous calculation. We could then perhaps look at the other of those who've spoken up as a form of the anti-austerity alliance, Plaid Cymru, four, you can see we're edging, 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 but not uh, quite there yet. The Greens could go in if they get those two seats. We're up to 303, but it is quite startling to see how these mathematics are shaping just on this very first glimpse of our exit poll tonight. Tom, there's so much politics well, to unpack, it's sort of staggering, really. Startling is the word, really because, I mean, I guess it is worth saying when we look at this, uh, of course, that if the Liberal Democrats really are on only 10 MPs, are they going to be in a position to, are they going to want to uh, support the Conservative Party? So